I want to welcome you to this IAC presentation in which I'm going to cover duplex scanning of the subcladian veins and arteries and go through a very basic lesson in probe orientation and reading the direction of flow. My name is Tish Poe, and I'm the Director of Training and Development with Medics Diagnostics in the SDU environment. Many people know me as a longtime uh, past board member and past president of the SBU. And I'm delighted to have been invited for, to give this presentation. I have no disclosures that are relevant to the presentation that I'm about to give. So let's get oriented. In every imaging modality, we have to take slices through the body in which we're trying to look at relevant anatomy. We have the transverse plane, which is going to divide the body or the body part into relatively top and bottom or upper and lower. We have the coronal plane, which is going to divide the body into the front and back sections and the sagittal view, which is going to divide the body into right and left halves. So every time we place the transducer on the patient, we should be aware of the planes of view that we are presenting. We also need to recognize that there is a convention to how we expect flow or body components, the parts that we're looking at, to be displayed on the screen. The left side of the screen is always assumed to be the patient's right side or their head. So if we must keep that in mind every time we lay the transducer down. The left side of the screen should be oriented to the patient's head or to their right side. So applying this principle, we have to be sure that the transducer orientation is correct or we will become confused when we look at flow direction and relative anatomy. So in a transverse view looking at a common femoral artery, the left side of the screen here is the right side of the patient's body. When we put the transducer in a transverse view at the right side, the right common femoral, we expect the artery to be to the left side of the screen and the vein to be to the right side of the screen. When we change into a long axis view or a sagittal approach to the vessel, the head again now is on this side of the screen or the left and caudal or foot is on the right side of the screen. In this manner, we should be able to expect what we're seeing in relative anatomy and very importantly to the vascular laboratory uh, assessments that we do, which direction the flow should be expected to be going so that we can say whether flow is normal and antegrade or whether something is reversed in flow direction. So labeling the probe position, when we're looking at the subcladian, we are talking now about looking at the body in terms of what is more medial or what is more lateral compared to the center line of the body. So medial and lateral toward the center or midline of the body or further away toward the outer edges of the body. So I recommend, and I've switched what I, how I've done this over the years, that the subclavian vein and artery, that when we talk about our probe position, that we say where we are along the clavicle. Not, I do identify proximal and distal in terms of flow patterns related to the heart, but in terms of my probe position, medial toward the midline, mid and lateral. So going to the other side, medial, mid and lateral. So you can see actually in, in slides that I've taken from my own collection that saying distal is helpful, but it's always very clearly understood if we say that we are in the right subclavian artery lateral across the clavicle, heading out toward the shoulder. So in this right subclavian artery depiction, lateral in, or right side is to this side of the screen, medial or toward the neck is here. And again, we expect, again, the right, the left side of the screen, pardon me, to be oriented toward the right side of the patient which when we're looking at the left subclavian artery, the right side of the patient is going to be toward midline and lateral is going to be out toward the shoulder. So subclavian arteries and vessels, arteries and veins are displayed in a long axis view when the transducer is transverse to the body. So if we hold to our principles, we will always make sure that the left side of the screen is toward the right 
relatively toward the right side of the patient. Likewise with the veins. So the transducer is in the same position, and we will look at whether flow should be approaching or receding from the line of sight. And we must agree on the transducer orientation in order to interpret direction of flow. One of the areas that concerns me the most in reading studies and doing them is that if there is central vein obstruction, flow will come toward basically a brick wall somewhere in the brachiocephalic or even the, the superior vena cava and flow back out the opposite direction. We always want to be very sure and clear when we're reading flow direction in both the arteries and the veins. So again, subclavian vessels are displayed in a long axis view with a transducer transverse to the body. By convention, we try to display normal arterial flow above the baseline in most labs. Many labs uh, adhere to this type of convention and it does make it easier for the reader to look through the many, many images we, we take in a given study. If by convention, we can agree that normal arterial flow would be displayed above the baseline and normal venous flow below the baseline. And in the opposite mode, if something is going to the side that's not expected, if normal, if arterial flow is below the baseline, that could indicate retrograde. Now we always need to check it and I'm gonna show you how to do that. By convention, we try to show normal systolic component of the arterial flow as red and normal venous flow in terms of its main basic pattern in blue. Again, to ease uh, the interpretation as you look through many, many images. The most important thing, though, is to always be able to read flow direction by the line of sight with the Doppler. And let's take a look at how that might be. Here we're looking at a vertebral artery. And if we have our conventions in, in uh, our probe position correctly oriented, the head is again to the left side of the screen, feet or caudal to the right side of the screen. Our line of sight with the Doppler comes in in this direction. And we would expect this to be a positive deflection. So if you look at the uh, Doppler spectral scale, you'll note that in some manner on your machine, it will either say that flow is negative if it's negative, not have a positive if, if that is the way the machine is set up. It can say invert. It can have different ways that different manufacturers display this. But you must get to know your equipment and know, all right, what how are they designating a positive flow deflection in terms of my line of sight? Here in the vertebral artery, this is antegrade, positive toward the head. And all we have to do is switch our line of sight with the Doppler. The head and feet, of course, are still the same. We haven't inverted the transducer. And we see that flow should now be moving in a negative fashion. The fact that it's red in both of these frames with different lines of sight is that the color bar has been inverted. Now we do this often and the machines help us to do this by just switching when we change our line of sight. But I want to just encourage everyone to try as, as, as much as possible to pay attention to this along the way. And I'll show you some good examples of why. So now we've turned our line of sight in this frame and the flow should be moving away. The systolic push should be red. And I want you to notice just very quickly that in both of these for a vertebral artery, the flow is all in one direction. It does not reverse at any time over time looking at the spectral Doppler. So positive toward and negative away, both antegrade depending on the line of sight. Now, if we look at something that is a flow pattern that has both positive and reverse flow components in a bi or triphasic peripheral artery, now how do we read flow direction in these vessels, knowing that our transducer is oriented correctly? So right axillary artery, again, head and caudal or foot end toward the hand. Line of sight is toward the head. Line of sight is toward the hand in this example. So color is a great assistant. We can see that this should be positive, and it is. And I'll explain again a little more about this as we go through the presentation.
And here it's a negative deflection. Both are normal anti-grade. And color's a great assistant. It's wonderful if you can either capture it in the systolic portion in the moment you capture color. You can capture that in red or you can cine loop back and make it red. That's all wonderful. In our busy labs, sometimes we don't pause to do that. And it really should be easily understood if we read the spectral Doppler and the color scales by the scales the way they're set up. Red on top, blue on the bottom here, positive above, go in the other direction, red is now moving away, and we see a negative deflection. So spectral Doppler will help us. How can it help us? Let's say we freeze a frame in a bi-directional or, or a basic arterial phasic flow that has both positive and negative deflections or flow throughout the cardiac cycle. So thinking of the timing in cardiac cycle, why is it red in this frame and blue in this frame? Color bar is set up exactly as it, it is exactly alike in both frames as a spectral scale. So why the change in color? It is the timing in the cardiac cycle. If the flow is not fully in one direction, color Doppler is going to change and should shift from red to blue or blue to red if flow is actually reversing. This is what we would expect. And you could capture the color at any moment in time in that split moment that you freeze the color, the Doppler scrolls and tells you the full story. So spectral Doppler is very important to helping us decide how the flow is actually going over time. If we look at the orientation of the color Doppler scale, in this view of a vertebral artery, we can see here that it's moving away in this line of sight, going to the head. Red is the away color. If we shift the color to blue, blue is away. What I don't know in this is if there is any reversal of flow. I know that by looking at this, this is going away, this is going away. Is there anything else to know? We have to look at the spectral scale. So look at the orientation of the color scale. Which one has been designated for approaching flow? Which one has been designated for receding or moving away from the Doppler line of sight? Now that we have everything oriented correctly and we've been through this amount of the explanation, look at the spectral scale. This should be a positive deflection. This should be a negative deflection. And always look at whether positive is above the baseline or negative is above the baseline. Both indicate anti-grade flow in this axillary vessel and then the brachial artery, knowing that uh, we have shifted the line of sight from angle toward the head to toward the hand or toward the foot. Now, this is how I break it down to be as simple as I need to be in order to understand line of sight. So when we are looking through an ultrasound field, we know that wherever the transducer is, there is going to be uh, energy that's emitted into the body that will give us an image across the field of view. When we shoot the Doppler, basically, when we engage Doppler, we can be at a near zero line of sight like this. And you have to, in these images, picture yourself kind of hovering above the traffic as we are doing when we're looking from near to far field in an ultrasound image. Okay. In this view, if we're hovering above the traffic, we would say right here that the flow is moving away. The, all of the cars, trucks, or cells in the blood vessel are moving away. In this view, we see that by engaging our line of sight straight down the barrel here, all of this uh, flow traffic is moving this way. Now, many times when we're uh, at a zero line of sight, we may see both flow moving away and toward as we have veins and arteries that take blood in one direction and arteries take it in one direction, veins bring it back in the other direction. So a zero line of sight, let's just look at this for a moment, way toward depending on our vantage point and how traffic is moving. In the area of the clavicular, the supraclavicular area, the brachiocephalic vein on the right and the brachiocephalic vein on the left merge, join, have a confluence into the superior vena cava. Now, if we're looking at this zero line of sight or very close to zero coming straight down the barrel, 
again, our transducer is here, but the Doppler line of sight is moving down through the field. Flow in these vessels should be receding from where we're sitting here and moving into the heart. And when we look at the brachiocephalic vein with the Doppler, spectral Doppler engaged, we see that it is blue moving away and it also is negative going away from us, receding, and this is normal. It's very important to keep this line of sight in mind because should there be central vein obstruction, flow patterns can change. And we don't want to say something is patent without saying whether it is in a normal flow direction. So taking my simplistic traffic movement kind of example to this level, we're going to look at a tube. And now we are not at a zero line of sight. Most of the vessels we look at are going to lie horizontal or close to it, curving, turning, twisting, but laying in a horizontal fashion in many of the areas that we are going to look at. So we're looking at something basically moving um, along underneath us from one side of the screen to the other. Again, always assuming that this side of the screen is the head or the right. So here we've engaged, the transducer is imaged and shows us there is something in the field. We engage the Doppler line of sight and the line of sight is looking this way toward the right side of the screen. And the color box is oriented in the same direction. So here's the slowest trickle flow you'll ever see probably. But we can slow this down and say, okay, the movement of these cells is going from this side of the screen, the right to the left. My line of sight is engaged toward the right. So the first thing you have to do is say, what vessel am I looking at? We can't just say whether something is normal and antigrade unless we know what vessel it is that we're imaging. Then we have to say, which way should the flow be going? Be relative to the Doppler line of sight. What way should it be going? For me to judge whether it's going forward or reversed, I have to know what way it should be going and know that I have my transducer laid down properly. So let's look at it again. Here is our, our, our transducer getting an image. Here's our line of sight being engaged with the color, with the spectral. And now we have to say, what vessel is this? The answer in this case is, okay, this is the right subclavian artery. And systolic flow should be approaching this line of sight. It should be normally positive because we know that we are moving from medial to lateral and our line of sight is this way and the cells should be moving toward this line of sight. Now look at how the spectral and scale and the color bar, the spectral Doppler scale and the color Doppler bar are oriented. I have designated, we, we make this decision, the machine often makes the decision somewhat for us as we move the box or the line of sight from one side to the other, the Doppler line of sight, but we should always pay attention to what it's doing. In this setup, we have basically designated Anything coming toward the line of sight should be in shades of red to yellow, and anything going away from the line of sight should be in blue to kind of a cyan color. And we have put positive above the baseline, so we expect the systolic push to be above the baseline. Normal flow direction, I've determined, is in this manner. And then when I look at it, we see red. If we freeze it on the systolic portion in color, what tells me the full story is going to be whether positive for the systolic deflection is above the baseline. This is the right subclavian artery. I can now say it's a normal antigrade flow pattern. In this lecture, we're not going to go over much of the waveform analysis. I also want to look at that and say, does the waveform appear to be have normal components? But this is a positive deflection, normal and antigrade flow in the right subclavian artery. Let's look at another one. Our traffic is moving this way. So when we look at this, we can say traffic is moving this way. It is going positive because here's positive and all the flow is moving in this direction with very little reversal, little bumps here. And that we are saying blue is the approaching color. Then I have to go through my questions. So what am I looking at? 
it is a positive deflection and blue is the positive color, but I expect it also not to be reversing color very, very much in over time in this vessel by what I'm seeing on the spectral display. I then determine this is the right subclavian vein and flow should normally be moving positive direction approaching this Doppler line of sight. Again, double check and look at the spectral scale. What is, where's positive displayed and which color has been designated as positive. Normal flow direction. And then we look at it again and say, ah, it's blue. It is positive. It's the right subclavian vein. My determination then is that it's normal anti-grade flow toward this Doppler line of sight. Let's look at another example. Left subclavian vein. And again, laterally or distal in terms of its orientation to flow toward the heart. So our setup again is that we have positive below the baseline. So we want to determine that. We also have determined that we have blue as the approaching color or the, the positive color. Now, normal flow direction basically would be this way if we know which vessel this is, moving mostly in a negative way. This is the flow direction. And our color tells us also that it's moving away from this line of sight. So it is a patent subclavian vein in the lateral aspect. It's the left subclavian vein and flow would normally be approaching this Doppler line of sight. Positives below the baseline. Look how the spectral and Doppler scale and the color bar are oriented. And in this instance, what we have is my determination is that if I'm looking in this line of sight at the left subclavian vein, flow should be largely approaching this line of sight. It color tells me it's moving away. The spontaneous flow here tells me that it's moving away until I augment it and then flow does go in the normal direction for just a moment during the augmentation, likely out through collaterals, and then its spontaneous course of flow is moving away from the line of sight. So this is an abnormal retrograde flow pattern in the left subclavian vein. Flow should normally be positive relative to the Doppler line of sight. So although this is patent, it looks wide open, the color is filling, there is some central obstruction that is driving flow in the wrong direction. So now let's go back and look at these subclavian arteries again, where we started. Knowing that the right side of the transducer is oriented where the right side of the patient is expected to be on the left side of the screen. So on the right, it would be lateral to this side of the screen, medial. Our line of sight is lined up looking in the direction toward the arm. So again, how would the traffic be moving? If we were standing here and we turned our line of sight this way, we would see flow receding. On the other side, opposite, again, line of sight, oriented here to the left side of the screen, right side of the patient, over here, oriented to the right side of the screen, this would be the left side of the patient. In this side as well, flow should be now moving away from this line of sight. It is not approaching how we're looking. It is receding from it in terms of those little cars or cells or however it helps you to imagine flow moving. Let's look at our example of subclavian veins. So we have our transducer orientation correctly um, uh, positioned and we have lateral and medial. If we look in this direction, flow should be moving from the left side of the screen toward this line of sight, heading this direction back toward the central venous system and back into the heart. On this side, the same line of sight, different from the arterial example I gave you. So from this line of sight, now flow should be moving from the right side of the screen crossing to the left side of the screen, and we are watching the flow recede. Again, I picture myself standing next to a street and seeing which way the traffic would be moving, coming toward or away from me if I shift my line of sight. You can use different clues if it helps you, but looking at these Doppler lines of sight, 
the rights of Clayton and Dane should be positive approaching this particular line of sight. And the less of Clayton and Dane should be negative, should be moving away from the line of sight. So by looking at both the color bar, which inverted here, and the spectral scale, which inverted here, we see normal venous flow depicted in blue below the baseline, normal venous flow depicted in blue below the baseline, a nice clue for our readers that we don't have to stop and, and read every time positive or negative. If we as technologists know the conventions and know the orientation and can maintain that throughout the study. So I want to thank you for your attention. I hope this uh, brief review of probe orientation and direction of flow is helpful. And I want to thank again the IAC for inviting me to deliver this presentation.